Halliburton is cutting 5,000 jobs in a statement. The oil services company said the cuts are necessary in what it's describing as a challenging market environment. The fall in oil prices has forced Halliburton to cut tens of thousands of jobs. Steve Volz is the president of GE Power. He joins me from Sarah Week Energy Conference in Houston. Uh, good to see you, sir. I know you've been talking a great deal about the digitization of uh, power uh, at this conference, and this is very much on GE's mind at the moment. But we have to actually start with <laughs> the, the fairly panicked situation that's taking place in the energy industry at the moment on all fronts, isn't it? Richard, as you said, it's, uh, I'm down here at Sarah Week in Houston, and uh, hey, face it, for the first couple of days, the talk of the whole discussion is the dynamic with oil prices, and clearly there is a supply-demand imbalance. Uh, this is an industry that's long cycle, and uh, it's going to take a bit for that to uh, work its way through, but uh, hey, these are long-term industries that require long-term investments. And uh, that's really the, the discussions that are going on and the investments that make sense in that industry cycle. When you talk about power generation, we have so many countries around the world. I, I think of you know, India uh, uh, as one of them. You think of large swathes of Africa, Johannesburg um, as, a, as a city, uh, another one, where there are serious deficiencies blackouts, if you like, grayouts, whatever we call them, in power now. What can we do? Richard, you're exactly right. Uh, still today, 1.2 billion people in the world do not have access to any electricity, and another 2 billion people don't have enough electricity. So those are some of the things you talk about, blackouts and brownouts. So, by the way, the world in the next 20 years needs 50% more electrical generation. And 70% of that will go into these developing regions. So I spent a lot of my time outside the U.S. I, some of those areas like Pakistan, we're putting in some of the latest gas power technology in the world. So the solutions now are basically across the whole cycle from gas to renewables to distributed generation and it's going to require a full mix to serve the total power needs of the world. Ah, but you, you put your finger on it. It's going to require all that and more, but where's the investment going to come from? Uh, particularly, because you, you said, it, look, you, you just said that these are long-term projects, and yet we have slow, yeah. slow global economy at the moment getting worse. So you can see the conundrum that makes this just about impossible at the moment. You know, uh, a lot of that investment will still come from the, the public uh, companies and governments, but definitely more of that financing has to come from the private markets. So uh, a lot of discussion about how to make this industry more financeable. But one of the areas this year, I've been coming to Sarah a number of years, the key topic this year is around digitization, which you mentioned earlier, which is we've seen that play out in the consumer world, but this is about how do you apply software, and data and analytics to existing equipment to get more out of that equipment. And quite frankly, that is a very investable project. And these are very good returns. And uh, this is about really providing more brains to existing generation in the world. Steve, thank you, sir. There's a, there's a seat for you sitting in the studio here next time you're in New York to come and join me on the set of Quest Means Business. Great. Richard, it. thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great day. Now, in Zimbabwe, one of the countries.